welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things from the double O's we'll never do again. Like the fire. For this list, we're looking at trends from 2000 to 2009 that are now lost to the past. Which of these trends do you miss the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Netflix DVDs Before streaming, the way we used Netflix was by renting DVDs through the mail. What's going on here? We would curate our cues carefully, hoping that none of the movies we wanted to see had a very long wait. In a time when physical rental stores reigned supreme, being able to get just about any DVD we could think of by mail with no late fees felt like a miracle. Go to Netflix.com, make a list of the movies you want to see, and in about one business day, you'll get three DVDs. Keep them as long as you want, without late fees. And if something wasn't available on Netflix's streaming service, waiting a few days for the DVD wasn't a bad trade-off. You can still rent discs through Netflix, but their library has diminished significantly. We love the convenience of streaming, but we still miss the excitement of getting one of those red envelopes in the mail. Return one in this prepaid envelope, and they'll automatically send you another movie from your list. Number 9. Burning Mix CDs We know it wasn't exactly legal, but it's hard to describe the thrill of putting your favorite songs on a blank CD, especially if it was for your crush. For a lot of people, the most common CD to burn is an audio CD. If you already have digital music on your computer, such as MP3 files and WMA files, you can use Windows Media Player to burn an audio CD that you can play on any CD player. The previous generation had to record songs off the radio, so this felt like we were truly in the future. It's your music burning on a Mac. But there were still some kinks to work out. One of the worst experiences was receiving a burn error message right before the CD was finished. But if it all went well, these mixes soon became fixtures in our portable CD players and boomboxes. The Sony Sports Discman, tough enough to keep playing hit after hit. We don't know where they went, but they were arguably the best compilations ever made. Number 8. The Atkins Diet Dr. Robert Atkins created his eponymous diet in the 60s, but the 2000s is when the craze really took over. So it really changed my energy level and it changed a lot of things, and so I decided to put other people on it. And uh, the rest is history. Some had the misconception that all you need to do on Atkins was avoid carbs and then you'd lose weight. But it required more discipline than simply eating bacon instead of bread. What the hell is that, a baggie full of bacon? Come oh, on, Atkins. What? Some followers were even restricting essential foods like certain vegetables because they had carbs. Numerous medical associations criticized the diet for its impracticality, and it's doubtful it can cause long-term weight loss. I'm doing Atkins. In the first six weeks, I lost 23 pounds. Then I went to 30 pounds I lost. And then Christmas came. And then I put on five pounds. It but let me tell you, I am now back in my jeans. If you're looking to lose weight for good, it's going to take more than a fad diet. Number 7. Using LimeWire To find songs for our mix CDs, we need to rely on peer-to-peer -peer file sharing services such as LimeWire. The software itself was a Java application that you simply downloaded for free from LimeWire.com. There was also a paid version called LimeWire Pro that promised faster speeds and better search results, but most people just went with the free basic version. But even though we were getting these songs for free, it wasn't always a cakewalk. Sometimes we'd find the song we want, but it was a low-quality version taken from the radio. Other times, the song would be completely mislabeled, and we were led to believe that Bob Marley wrote Don't Worry, Be Happy rather than Bobby McFerrin. Don't worry, be happy. And then there was the possibility of downloading a virus to the family computer. Damn LimeWire! The generation growing up on Spotify doesn't know how easy they have it. Number 6. Scene did you spend much of the 2000s at Hot Topic hoping others would notice how cool your bright pink hair and eyeliner were? Oh, Hot Topic? When did this open? Two weeks ago. It used to be a banana republic. Of course. Freaking Hot Topic. That explains everything. If so, you probably considered yourself a scene kid. Like many other youth-led subcultures, scene thrived on defiance of the status quo, even if it meant trying to fit in with countless other scene kids. Music was another core part of scene identity, 
with emo and pop-punk bands like My Chemical Romance and Paramore making so many young millennials feel heard. Okay, maybe it was just a phase, but it was still a healthy stage of adolescent development, even if we don't go so hard on the mascara now. Number five, playing Minesweeper. Parents won't buy you a PlayStation or Xbox? Well, there are still plenty of other ways to be a gamer, like playing Minesweeper, for instance. And there are 10 mines in it. And what your goal is to do is to cover up those mines and not basically not lose. If your computer had Windows, then you probably remember many rainy afternoons of clicking on squares trying not to get blown up, figuratively speaking. At first, we would just click around randomly, but we eventually started using our critical thinking skills. Of course, sometimes we had to guess and it would backfire. That you just have to get really used to seeing and just, you know, making sure you're careful because if you try to go too fast, you will be not careful and end up losing. But if the internet was down and there was nothing on TV, a game of Minesweeper, or 10, was a decent solution. You can still download the app on your phone, but in such a competitive market for mobile gaming, Minesweeper will always feel retro. Number four, iPods. Want to feel old? The original iPod turned 20 years old in October 2021. We cannot overstate how much of a game changer this was when it came to listening to music. Basically, if you want to compete with Apple on this thing now, you gotta, you got to have an iPod knockoff. You can't do something much different. So it's changed the world that way. To be able to fit hundreds of songs into one device that could fit into your pocket was like discovering fire. But the biggest thing about iPod is it holds a thousand songs. Now, this is a quantum leap because it's your, for most people, it's their entire music library. Sure, it was a bit clunkier than later models and you couldn't make phone calls or surf the web on it, but that didn't matter when you were able to soundtrack your life like never before. And who can forget the sound of the click wheel as we looked for the perfect song? The iPod reminded us why we love music all over again. Number three watching TRL. Appointment viewing has changed a lot since the 2000s. Now we're binge watching thought provoking shows like Squid Game, but back in the day, we raced home to see brief snippets of music videos play while a studio audience screamed. And I'm joined now by the one and only Britney Spears. MTV's Total Request Live, or TRL, was a daily countdown show where the top 10 most requested videos of each day were played. Plus, all the hottest celebrities came to promote their new releases. Touch Mariah Carey! You gotta be kidding me. And who didn't love watching when they left the studio for spring break and summer episodes? We always dreamed of making it to Times Square to be in the audience, but at least we did our part to vote our favorite videos to the top. Number two, using Razer phones. Before the iPhone, the most desirable cell phone was a Motorola Razer. It might have looked like an ordinary flip phone, but its ultra-thin design gave it a sleekness that outshone its clunkier competitors. And it wasn't just looks. The Razer was also ahead of the curve when it came to front-facing cameras. The line between form and function just became razor thin. The Motorola Razer. And there was no better way to feel stylish than with a hot pink Razer. Motorola brought back the Razer as a smartphone in 2020, but the poor reviews and ridiculously high price suggest that this phone is best kept as a fond memory of the 2000s. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Dessert Beauty. We loved Jessica Simpson so much, we bought her edible beauty products. To be able to give flavors to my fans that I enjoy and that I love, it's, it's a very cool thing. MySpace surveys. Before Twitter and TikTok, this was social media. The Smiths were the cure. The cure. The Smiths. I was a huge oh, cure fan. Oh, there's a wall that just oh, went know, up right here. Playing Dance Dance Revolution. 
who knew gaming could provide so much exercise? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Talking on AIM AOL Instant Messenger was the most important communication platform for so many millennials. I poured so much time into making my profile icons cute, my away messages were just so emo, and you know, maybe the person I'm thinking about would know that this lyric from the Smashing Pumpkins song is about them. There was hardly anything more exciting than creating your first screen name, which was no doubt something incredibly cringy, and chatting with your friends when you should be in bed. I would sneak down from my room and like get on my family's computer and just like make sure that the sound was turned off so like none of the AIM sound effects would wake up my parents. We would obsess over our away messages, get nervous about messaging our crushes, and work through our problems one message at a time. We learned what LOL, BRB, and TTYL all meant from AIM. There are other messaging platforms available now, but none fill us with the same warm feelings as this one. If we knew there was ever going to be a world without AIM, we would have shown it more appreciation. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.